Good afternoon, everyone. Disheartening blast of snow and bitter cold returns across the U.S. All that purple and blue, 30 degrees Fahrenheit below normal temperatures. All those trains that were stuck, finally the people are rescued. Remember the record snows in Arizona? Now Phoenix finally reached its first 80 degree days, a month late. Chicago really doesn't break below zero degree Fahrenheit temperatures, but it may this week. Atlanta, do I see 11 degrees Fahrenheit there in that wind chill? But according to the IPCC, it's just, it's just weather. So how do you think our plants are responding to just weather when it was spring for several weeks and now it's back into winter? Matching temperature reductions on our earth with solar activity declines and we are heading into a 400 year solar minimum. So what do you think is going to happen with our global temperatures? I bet they're going to go down. I would start stockpiling and learning how to grow food. And during these uncertain times, I've teamed up with My Patriot Supply Long-Term Food Storage, a nice affordable starter kit, two-week food supply, 1,500 calories per day, breakfast, lunch, and dinners, plus the four-gallon storage containers included in that. This is a good first step in getting more self-sufficient and if you click through the Prepare with Adapt 2030 page in My Patriot Supply, you can get this starter kit for 75 bucks. Please remember there's a limit of two per household in this special offer. In the New York Times pinning it correctly, March getting off to a stormy start with snow and frigid temperatures from the Rockies to uh, Florida. Now, those of you around D.C. area, East Coast, the climate guy, Chris Martz, he has the channel, The Climate Guy, but because of the interference with YouTube, he started a new channel over there, Chris Martz Weather. If you're looking for regional D.C. East Coast, this is where you want to stop. Taking a look at the lower 48 parts of Canada, anywhere you see that green intrusion, that teal color, those are below zero temperatures. So it's minus 15 degrees Fahrenheit below zero, minus 20 below zero. And these extreme below normals are going to continue through the end of the week here and on into the weekend. Lower 48 U.S. Anywhere you see that blue or shades of blue, that's 20 to 30 degrees Fahrenheit below the normal temperatures. Talked to somebody down in Tennessee just yesterday, and they said that the daffodils had already bloomed due to the weeks prior being warmer than normal. And the Bradford pears had also started to come out and bud and even some of them begun to flower. And she said, everything just froze and is wilting over, dying on the vine, literally. So you can expect the fruit production out of anywhere that had this early start to spring to get a pullback in production for the year. Fruit prices up. Now checking back in on the story, the crews and the passengers out of these trains that were stuck in extremely heavy snows, at least four accounts of trains stuck on the tracks, National Guard rescues, helicopter rescues, finally everybody's out of there. But I wanted to give you this image that was so buried in the media, the only place they really covered it was the actual town that it was happening or that area that it was happening. Too inconvenient. That much snow to stop locomotives. And over to Phoenix, finally reaching an 80 degree day. It's the first time in 2019, but generally these 80 degree days occur February 9th. So it's running almost a full month late before the normal temperatures return here. So you can expect the spring planting season to be delayed. And then looking back as well, February 22nd, 3rd, 4th, the massive record snows across Las Vegas. All those amazing pictures that you saw with snow coming down in the strip. Here we go. Check out the crater covered in snow. So it seems to be a trend. More moisture in the desert areas of the United States. More snowfall, cooler temperatures. Look over here at Texas. The more reddish brick colors, those are in the 20 degree Fahrenheit range. When you get into the lighter blues, we're looking at freezing or just a little bit above. Even down into northern Louisiana, 37 degrees Fahrenheit. That's way low. Not normal at all for this time of the year. And speaking of snowfalls, because so much snow had fallen in Arizona and Nevada this year, record snowfall, Des Moines, Iowa. Now, this is a well-known spot for extremely cold winters, extremely heavy snowfall anyway. And here they are breaking the record back to 1886. 
Who would have guessed if a grand solar minimum was intensifying that we would go back through the 1800s records, back into the 1600s records, 400 year records being broken? Not yet. Wait until 2020 to 2021. New record low temperatures. Elk Park, Montana, minus 46 degrees below zero Fahrenheit. March 4th, that smashed the record back to 1897. And also Ryan Maui, as always, giving us the amazing forecasts, pushing out into the future weeks, a month out of the GFS models. Chicago hair, bringing us up through March 4th. Even in the byline here, not a lot of March days with below zero temperatures in Chicago in the last 150 years. So as this Super Freeze 3.0 progresses through the U.S., it's very possible that it's going to tip below zero in Chicago in March. But wait, I thought winters were supposed to be getting milder with global warming. They would be getting cooler with the grand solar minimum, though. And then we take a look at Atlanta. 11 degrees Fahrenheit with the wind chills. So I pulled up the regional map here so you can see from Tennessee all the way down to Florida, Miami, the Keys, full out west to Louisiana, Arkansas. All that blue means... Crops are being destroyed because they budded early. This is the same thing that happened last year. So you can anticipate that it'll happen this year, next year, the next next year as our jet streams move out of their normal flows. We're going to get these early warmings in February, which the IPCC will absolutely say is an indication that CO2 is warming the planet. And then we're going to get these super freezes that come in and wipe out all of our crops that had started budding early. Look for fruit prices and berry prices up. Oh, is that the second time I said that in the video? Yeah, that's how important it is that you understand that this is a trend and you can start to see it. You can map it out, prepare yourself, take action to get ready for this because next year is going to be worse. And by the time we come into 2023 and 2024, everything you buy is going to be two to three times more expensive. Jumping over to Severe Weather EU, Comparing Europe's freezing cold temperatures in Norway with what we have in the United States. Side-by-side -side polar vortex comparison. They even have the freezing emoji for the Norway Weather Service here. Minus 28 degrees Celsius below zero. Now remember, since it's in Europe, it's not Fahrenheit, it's Celsius. But once you get around that minus 30 to minus 40 degree mark, those Fahrenheit and Celsius temperatures start to match. So we're looking at Something around minus 25 degrees Fahrenheit in Norway. Extremely unusual for this time of the year, even in what you would consider Nordic countries. Incredibly cold. But again, all the news media says, oh, it's just weather. Just weather. Global warming where it's hot, it's just weather where it's freezing cold. That's just weather. But regardless as what the humans are labeling this weather as, the plants are responding differently. They don't care. They were awoken early because of the equatorial vortex bending out of its normal flows, heat coming up from the equator in the wrong place at the wrong time, grasses growing, sprouting, flowers blooming, buds coming, and then whoosh, back to the super freeze. We got snow, record cold temperatures, and this is an example in Estonia. So if it's happening in Europe to this extent, and it's happening in the United States to this extent, and that is two major food producing continents that are going to be crushed in their yields this year for so many things that we eat. So as you see your food prices rising in the supermarket, please understand it is not CO2. It's not you. It is the sun in a 400 year cycle. And we take a look at University of Alabama, Huntsville, the February temperatures. Remember the media was telling you February was so warm. It was record hot and whoa, world records. February is the hottest ever but it was the same exact temperature as January. One one hundredth of a degree difference. Now, when you get into that kind of variance, that's a rounding error. But what I do like about Dr. Roy Spencer's site is with the data set that he presents, instead of just showing the temperatures, he breaks it down by region. So then you can compare. So I took out 2018 February temperatures, 2019 February temperatures, putting them side by side, we can see the yellow box those are all the temperatures that decreased. Now, the Australian media keeps going on, the Bureau of Meteorology nonstop yapping 
that it is the warmest year ever and the winter was the hottest ever down there. But if we look over the year, the temperatures actually dropped more than a tenth of a degree. And take a look at the lower 48 US. That is almost a full one degree drop. Celsius, not Fahrenheit, Celsius. So you can expect the lower 48 to go lower next year. And the Arctic, why is it dropping in temperature if it's supposed to be warming up there? See, these are the questions that really need to be asked into the news media and really need to be asked in these next presentations for the IPCC coming up, why they're not taking into account solar variability, grand solar minimums, cyclic activity in our sun when they're putting out their projections. Because if somebody can simply match this up that the solar activity equals declines in global temperature, why can't the IPCC do it with all their millions in funding? So these are two very good correlations of prior declines in solar activity. Not in the grand solar minimum 400 year periodicity, but these are in the 100 year, 200 year catalog sunspot counts. But here we are. This is where we're going with the new 400 year cycle that we're entering in. Our in right now, which is intensifying. This is why the weather is so strange around our planet. They don't want to spook you as the person. They know if they tell the human race what's going on, they're going to freak out and there's going to be panic everywhere. They're trying to control the panic on the planet. This information is not meant for the mainstream. And I do this channel because I'm here with you on this planet. We're all going to go through this together. So I encourage you, please support this channel. Visit my advertisers here, my Patriot Supply, what you saw in the beginning with the video about the long-term food storage. They also have water filtration, dehydration equipment, and everything you need to get your own food supply stored for a long period of time. Also, trueleafmarket.com is my favorite seed supplier. These seeds are so well packed in the Mylar bags that they stay for at least five to seven years if you don't open them. Those can be traded on in the future. I do thank you for watching, and if you want to sign up for the new newsletter that I've started, oilseedcrops.org, there should be a box that pops up. I'm going to update the PDF that arrives after you enter your email address. You can also follow me on gab.ai forward slash adapt2030 and also minds.com forward slash adapt2030. Thanks for your time and I will see you next video.